Each day in the Bay Area and throughout Northern California, thousands of us engage in some routine of focused physical motion, exerting our bodies to create a momentum that rewards our bodies, propelled by a thousand different motives and accomplished by a hundred different means, the result is the same, body speed. featured coverage of Northern California's human-powered races, presenting stories, faces, and bodies at all levels of ability and speed. Body Speed is brought to you by Alamo Rent-A-Car, where all the miles are free, by Power Bar, fuel for optimum performance, and by KSFO Radio. On this edition of Body Speed, you'll see running legends Frank Shorter and Bill Rogers go head-to-head -head, along with other college greats running for their alma maters in the San Francisco Alamo Alumni Run. But first, we'll take a look at world-class cycling action in the 32nd running of the Weather Boss Tour of Nevada City Bicycle Classic. The Weather Boss Tour of Nevada City Bicycle Classic is sponsored by Weather Boss, maker of quality, environmentally safe stains and paints. To learn more about Weather Boss products and their distributors, call 702-789-2691. On Sunday, October 25th, the software publishing biathlon will be staged from Coyote Hellier Park in San Jose. This user-friendly biathlon features the simplicity of a 12-mile bike and 5-mile run with just one transition, perfect for first-timers and veterans as well. For entries or more information, call 415-668-8468. This October 25th event benefits Champs Foundation and is sponsored by the Software Publishing Corporation and the California Beef Council. Look for TV coverage on Body Speed on Sports Channel. There's nothing else like it on Earth, or maybe even in Heaven. It stretches for 725 miles, and it's called the California Coastline. There are over 4 million miles of roads in Alamo Territory all across America. And every day, with every car nationwide, only Alamo gives you all those miles for free, including the ones where the people bask in the sun and watch the seals, and the seals bask in the sun and watch the people. Nevada City, California, an old gold rush town 3,000 feet up on the western edge of the Sierra Mountains, picturesque and historic town, is today's setting for the Weather Boss Tour of Nevada City Bicycle Classic. As the second oldest bike race in the United States, the Weather Boss Nevada City Classic has treated spectators to a rich 31-year history of cycling legends. Chief among them, Greg LeMond, America's greatest cyclist, won this race as a teenager in 1979 and won the following two years in a row. Women began racing here in 1978, with top cyclists such as world champion Marianne Berglund scoring impressive wins since then. For three decades, Nevada City's reputation has grown as one of the greatest challenges in American bicycle racing. The course, just over 1.1 miles, features more than 400 feet of vertical climbing each lap. This is a criterium race, with men doing 40 laps and women doing 20 laps. Let's hear what some of the veterans have to say about it. This is the hardest criterium in the country, I think, by far. If you're on, you have a good chance. If you're off, forget it. And the conditions today look really brutal. Well, I think it's going to be uh, pretty much a death march. Leaving the men to ponder their 45-mile fate, the women racers prepare for their 20-lap challenge. Team riders consisting of Category 1 and Cat 2 cyclists make up the bulk of the women's field, such as KOME radio team and the Sausalito Cyclery Twin Peaks cycling team. Jackie Phelan of Team Wombat stands out among the favorites, along with Susie Forsyth and Michelle Blaine. With Broad Street cleared of traffic and lined with spectators, we're ready for the women's start of the Weather Boss Tour of Nevada City Bicycle Classic. Riders ready? Go! Thank you. 
Most riders adopt a wait-and-see tactic for the first laps, although two unattached riders break away for a bit of short-lived glory. But Jackie Phelan soon ventures out to the front of the pack to grab an early preem, a special lap prize bonus. Michelle Blaine of Valhalla Racing responds. She too pulls away from the pack, eating up Phelan's lead. Susie Forsyth, just behind Blaine, begins to work the hills of the back stretches. Susie had a baby one year ago and has worked hard to make a comeback. There's no doubt that she's determined to stay in the front of this field as she laps another rider here. Susie Forsyth is about to challenge Blaine and Phelan for the lead. While the starting line crowd is treated to balcony seats, every part of the course provides a view of the cycling drama as the women spread out along its 1.1 mile length. Here we catch Margaret Flaherty of the KOME team applying all her skills to staying among the top 10 with just under six laps to go. While the backfield struggles for position, Susie Forsyth has taken the lead and now has just two laps to go. At the bell, Susie continues to lap other riders, and as Michelle Blaine hits the bell lap, neither she nor the other riders getting the signal for the final lap can hope to catch Susie in the back stretches. 27-year-old Susie Forsyth comes down the home stretch to win the 1992 Weatherboss Tour of Nevada City Bicycle Classic, while Michelle Blaine and Jackie Phelan sprint in for second and third places. We'll be back after these messages. The Weatherboss Tour of Nevada City Bicycle Classic is sponsored by Weatherboss, maker of quality, environmentally safe stains and paints. To learn more about Weatherboss products and their distributors, call 702-789-2691. It's almost as if someone once said, just in case people like sunshine and water, we'd better make Florida. And we'd better make miles of beautiful beaches and places like St. Augustine and Key West, just in case people want to go to them. There are over 4 million miles of roads in Alamo territory all across America. And nationwide, only Alamo gives you all those miles for free, including the ones that run through a state that's named after sunshine. So while the men begin to warm up and the women's winners collect their accolades and $1,500 prize money, let's get a few last minute comments on strategy from the top men. Well this race doesn't have a lot of strategy just because it is so brutal, the course is so hard that uh, you basically kind of try to get into a groove and stay with the group and as the race disintegrates you just keep moving up and making little attacks here and there. It's not a super strategic race in that sense. Um, the, advice that I've given these guys today is just you know try to get in a good position early to avoid the crashes. You know, if you just I think are just a little bit off today you're not going to be there with the heat and the course. I'm going to fight to the death here. Uh, I've been feeling a little bit better over the past couple weeks. It's a race like any other race. The guy who wins is the guy who crosses the finish line first. Well yeah you start here and it's downhill the first turn and uh, after the race gets going you're going 35, 45, sometimes even 50 down the home straightaway make that sharp left hand turn and then it's just you know then you just suffer like a dog for the next three or four minutes. Their wheels and the rest of their cycling hardware won't know the difference but the riders will indeed suffer like dogs in the 100 degree heat of this day. But most of these guys have felt this Nevada City heat and come back for more. Chad Gerlach and Andy Kennedy returned after being top finishers among the junior riders in 1991. Mike Peavy is a Nevada City local. He knows the heat in the hills of this town like no one else here. And the L.A. Sheriff's team riders train in this heat on a regular basis. Heat or not, the final top contenders Scott Moniger and Mike Engelman of the Coors Light team get set online. We're ready for the men's start of the Weather Boss Tour of Nevada City Bicycle Classic. Three, two, one, go! Come on, Nevada City!
Roy Nickman seeks the glory of the lead on the first lap, while the pack stays tight. And Mike Peavy grabs a few moments of glory in front of his hometown fans. But after winning the lap six cream, Peavy is reeled back in by the pack. The pack begins to stretch out into a line with riders testing each other by swapping leads. And the Coors Light team looks formidable and it may be a question only of who among them will push the pace. And here's Scott Moniger emerging from the lead pack beginning to lap other riders. A second pack led by Coors Light's Mike Engelman follows with a third pack not far off the pace. And on the next lap, Moniger maintains his lead with fellow Coors Light teammates Alexi Grewal and Mike Engelman leading the front of the pack. And Chris Huber leads a strong pursuing pack. Moniger continues to stretch his lead. With the race nearly half over, he's into a smooth flow as though he's mastered this criterium loop, psyched out his competitors, and even beat the heat of this Nevada City race. So as Scott Moniger continues to build his lead, the riders behind him work in small packs like Pierce, Palinetti, and Nickman, alone like Alexi Grewal is now doing, or in pairs. Help comes from the sidelines as well, as we see Chad Gerlach's dad keeping his son on pace. But at midpoint in the race, the best friend of these riders is water. In the last few laps, Engelman has worked to catch Moniker, with both their attentions never far from that water either. Having decided to work in tandem, Scott Moniker and Mike Engelman now dominate this race with just 11 laps to go. Leaving Alexi Graywall, Wayne Morgan, and Steve Haig battling over third place. Even with their dominance, their work is not over. It's easy to see why they have this lead as we watch them work efficiently as individual riders and as a team. With the great season both of these riders have been having, Scott Moniger having done particularly well the last few months, It'll be interesting to see how they handle the finish. Will they sprint against each other? As they approach the final lap, we'll soon see. Here they come into the home stretch. They've got some speed coming out of this corner. But no, Moniger and Engelman join hands, letting the finish line cameras decide the number one and number two positions at the Weather Boss Nevada City Classic. And here's the final battle for third place with Wayne Morgan of New Zealand winning the crowd's cheers as he edges out Alexi Graywall at the finish. Waiting for the camera's pick of first and second place, we got a few comments from Scott Moniker as his Coors Light teammate Mike Engelman looks on. Like I said, it's not as easy as it looks. I've been doing it long enough, so got it down to a fine art. But you know, no, it's really it's a tough course. You know, it's just it's basically a uh, man against the course. It's not really. Uh, the field really doesn't have that much to do with it, you know, and, and having a lot of teammates isn't that beneficial either. It's just, if you're feeling good, you can ride away from guys. If not, you know, you take this toll. With the heat, a major factor here, along with the hills, Mike Engelman finds that he has been awarded the win. Everybody was really tired, and I wasn't really sure if they were bluffing or not, so I, I attacked, but uh, once I was solidly away, Lynn Pettyjohn, our director, had Scott wait for me, so we just rode together. It's a hard crit because there's there's really no rest. You've got to make your go all the way. I mean, the downhill, you kind of zing along it, but it, it, it ends quick. Oh, everybody wants to win this race. You know, it's, it's a famous race. So with Wayne Morgan taking third place, Mike Engelman is first and Scott Moniger is second at the 32nd annual Tour of Nevada City Bicycle Classic. The Weather Boss Tour of Nevada City Bicycle Classic is sponsored by Weather Boss, maker of quality, environmentally safe stains and paints. To learn more about Weather Boss products and their distributors, call 702-789-2691. 
On Sunday, October 25th, the software publishing biathlon will be staged from Coyote Hellier Park in San Jose. This user-friendly biathlon features the simplicity of a 12-mile bike and 5-mile run with just one transition, perfect for first-timers and veterans as well. For entries or more information, call 415-668-8468. This October 25th event benefits Champs Foundation and is sponsored by the Software Publishing Corporation and the California Beef Council. Look for TV coverage on Body Speed on Sports Channel. There's nothing else like it on Earth, or maybe even in Heaven. It stretches for 725 miles, and it's called the California Coastline. There are over 4 million miles of roads in Alamo Territory all across America, and every day, with every car nationwide. Only Alamo gives you all those miles for free, including the ones where the people bask in the sun and watch the seals, and the seals bask in the sun and watch the people. Hi, I'm Dave Rohde for Body Speed, and here at the Alamo Alumni Run in San Francisco's Golden Gate Park, the heat may not be an issue, but competition between old rivals is. Running legends Frank Schroeder and Bill Rogers first competed against each other in the 70s. In the past 20 years, they have met over 50 times at the starting line. Bill has won a majority of those matchups. Today, they compete as Masters runners. And here at the Alamo Alumni Run, Frank Schroeder is ready to even the score with Bill Rogers. Well, it, it's something that uh, I like to think benefits both of us because uh, for some reason, we happen to come along at the right time and in, in, in our uh, own times, which were sort of concurrent, uh, were the best in the world, and for some reason we were both able to hold together for 20 years and continue competing against each other, which is very unusual. So I think we use each other in a way in that my goal is always to try to beat Bill and his is always to try to beat me, but it's not, I think, in the sense of how it was when we were younger. It's more that's what keeps you going out the door every day rather than, well, if I beat him then maybe it gives me a certain status. It's more for self-motivation now. I think. I think Frank touched on it pretty accurately, you know, and I, I feel the same way. There was a time, you know, when Frank was the top guy in the world and, and I tried to move up and, and uh, try to compete against him. Now we're sort of more even and everything, and, uh, <clears throat> but it's been a battle over the years. And uh, most people, I don't think there are many things going on in sports where you've competed hard for 20 years against each other, you know. Uh, this is the last of the Alamo alumni runs of this year, last of three, and Bill's beat me in the other two, and I'd certainly like to beat him here, but if Boston's any indication, I've got to run about 30 seconds faster, and he's got to run about 30 seconds slower. But we'll see. Bill's always got an excuse, and, and maybe this time the excuses are real. <laughs> of course, I always do have excuses, and Frank knows that. <laughs> the Alamo alumni run is unique among road races. This five-miler includes competition between individuals, but it also offers major prizes and incentives to teams of runners representing their alma mater. <laughs> Olympic marathoner Nancy Dietz is running for her alma mater today, even though she didn't run at all when she attended Stanford. That's why I love running the Alamo alumni run so much, because it's my chance to represent Stanford and to bring a little prestige to the university, and um, hopefully we'll win some money for the athletic program there. The Welsh twins beat me in Boston. Um, they were representing Boston University, and I think it was I just didn't have that Stanford mo motivation. I was the only one there from Stanford, and so um, I'd really, really like to win. I think we have a good team here today. And As the Lowell High School Band relates their motivational message to all the alumni here this morning, we got a few comments about the Alamo Alumni Run series from eight-time national cross-country champion Pat Porter running today for Adams State College. Uh, in the Alamo Alumni Run Series this year, I'm 3-0, and and I'm 5-0 and overall, so hopefully I'll add one more today in San Francisco. Well, how are you feeling today? I feel very good. I'm in very good shape right now. Of course, I love to run in the fall. It's cross-country season. I came off a miserable summer. I couldn't buy a race, but got all those problems worked out, so today should be a pretty good run for me. I'm ready. I'm ready to run. Towing the line at the start of the Alamo alumni run, we find a few last-minute entries that may make Pat Porter work for this victory, including Dan Stefanisco and Craig Steinmaus running for UC Davis, and Olympic trials qualifier David Frank.
As expected, Pat Porter takes an immediate lead. Going out with him are number 30, Dwight Hager of Minneapolis, and number 472, Sam Gwynn of Berkeley. Some of these runners will want to challenge Pat Porter today just because he is Pat Porter. No one in the history of running has ever won eight consecutive national cross-country championships as Pat has. He's a running hero. Sam Gwynn perhaps dreamed of hearing a race announcer say, it's Sam Gwynn and Pat Porter neck to neck for the lead. In this race, school pride is not an unlikely motivation for staying up front either. Right now, Bucknell University alumni hold three of the top six positions in this race. The pride of Adams State College, Pat Porter, will make his competition run his race. His resume alone dictates that reality. Two-time Olympian, seven-time All-American, sub-four miler, winner of dozens of road races, plus his godlike status in cross country. Pat Porter is the man to beat in any race. Here's a new challenger. David Frank seems to surprise Porter a bit, and Craig Steinmaus joins the challenge into the long uphill stretch of this course. Racing along Speedway Meadow through the comforting shade of Golden Gate Park, Pat Porter is challenged by David Frank, number 362, and Craig Steinmaus as they hit the two-mile mark in nine minutes and 50 seconds, headed into the last of this long uphill stretch of the course. Pat Porter pulls ahead, testing David Frank, but Frank is not easily shaken. David Frank ran the steeplechase and set the school record at Stanford, and it still stands. Even as a full-time teacher and coach, he ran a 218 marathon last year for the Olympic trials. He has no intention of letting Porter have this race. Back in the second pack, Bill Rogers seems to have a comfortable lead over old rival Frank Shorter, and he has obviously lost none of his legendary smoothness and speed. A few minutes behind Bill, Nancy Dietz has definitely shaken any other contenders for the first place woman. Her form alone is evidence for Nancy Dietz being honored as our Power Bar Athlete of the Month. Let's find out more. Nancy Dietz, a Bay Area legend, started running at the age of 25, and she immediately found that she had a talent for it. In 1984, she won the largest race in the world, Examiner Beta Breakers. From there, she went on to marathons, winning Oakland, San Francisco, and Los Angeles marathons. In 87, she was named the top American marathoner at the World Track and Field Championships. The following year at the Olympics in Seoul, she was the first American finisher in the women's marathon. Nancy has continued her winning tradition with outstanding performances at Wharf to Wharf, Run to the Far Side, and Alamo alumni run victories in both New York and San Francisco. Why not running in college? I, it never occurred to me to run in college. I just, you know, I was fairly athletic, but running was not something that interested me in the slightest. <laughs> well, I started running because there's a little race in my town that goes from one bar to another, and you get a free pitcher of beer at the finish line. It's put on by Jim Plunkett and a bunch of other football players from Stanford that were friends of mine and I thought geez that you know there was incentive <laughs> and so that was my first race and then about six months later I thought I'd like to try a marathon I'd always been sort of captivated with the idea of running a marathon. Did the first couple of runs just feel real good to you? It didn't come easily it was um, it always was work. Do you think that having started late uh, as a runner gave you some edge once you did start to compete? Well, I think the fact that my body was fully developed. I wasn't running while I was still growing. I was a, I was a mature person. I think that has really helped reduce in, injuries. And also, I think you only have a limited amount of time where you can really compete and focus in on it. And it, and it just happened to be sort of a peak marathoner age for yeah. me. Yeah. Before we go back to the race, let's hear from the race sponsor, Alamo Rent-A-Car. It's almost as if someone once said, just in case people like sunshine and water, we'd better make Florida. And we'd better make miles of beautiful beaches and places like St. Augustine and Key West, just in case people want to go to them. There are over four million miles of roads in Alamo territory all across America. And nationwide, only Alamo gives you all those miles for free, including the ones that run through a state that's named after sunshine.
Now, back to body speed. Back at the Alamo alumni run, Nancy Dietz looks to have yet another victory under her belt. But David Frank is still making Pat Porter work to maintain his perfect win record for the Alamo alumni run series. Porter seems determined to pull ahead of Frank. David Frank is losing ground to Porter, although Frank is not losing his speed or form. Porter has just gone into overdrive. Famous for his leg speed and long stride, Pat Porter enters the polo field track, checks his pace, and confidently pours it on, having gained tremendous ground on Frank in the last mile. Pat Porter wins the San Francisco Alamo alumni run, covering five miles in 24-13. David Frank finishes second, 30 seconds behind Porter, and Dan Stefanisco, a UC Davis alum, takes third. His teammate, Craig Steinmaus, takes fourth. Bill Rogers is first master and fifth overall. Frank Shorter finishes 30 seconds later as the second master at the Alamo alumni run. Let's get the winner's comments on the race. Pat, you won. You did it. Yeah, yeah, pulled it off. San Francisco is a good place for me to run. So the course was uh, kind of tough, you thought? It, it was a tough course, but a, a good one. And it was a good one for me to test my fitness on. I made a move where I wanted to and ran real solid. So what, I ran 24-13. So on this course, that's not so bad. So I'm happy with it. Great. Bill, you did it again. You got the Masters Division again at the Alamo Alumni Run here in San Francisco. How did that feel? Like I said before, I always want to beat Frank Shorter, you know, and, uh, but it was a harder race than the last time we raced in Boston. Frank uh, is training much harder. He's not cycling as much these days. He's focusing on his running, and uh, it showed in the race. You know, I had to really push like crazy to get away from him. Well, I had him for about two and a half miles, and uh, then he ran down that long mile, mile and a half downhill on this course. This is a great course, by the way. But on that downhill, nobody's better than Bill. We were both at about 12th place at that point. He went from 12th to 3rd or 4th in a mile down that hill, so that was it. He got away from me, beat me by about 20 seconds. I'm getting closer. Uh, I'm getting closer to him. I'm going to get him one of these times. As was evident earlier in the race, Nancy Dietz runs virtually unchallenged at the Alamo Alumni Run and wins in a time of 30-58. We caught Nancy with teammate, friend, and second place finisher, Sissy Hop St. Jem, for some reactions. Oh, it was terrific today. Beautiful day, and um, I tried to get away early so that uh, Sis wouldn't catch me at the end, but she was closing. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see Nancy till like the last uh, half mile, but she's my best friend, so I let her beat me. <laughs> so at the Alamo Alumni Run, the well-known veterans take the day among individual runners, and in the alumni team competition, UC Davis and Bucknell University are first and second in the open men's teams, and Stanford and UC Berkeley are number one and number two among the women's teams. Thanks for joining us here on Body Speed. We've seen some exciting action in both cycling and running. And before we go, let's do a recap of the final standings of both the Weather Boss Tour of Nevada City Bicycle Classic and the Alamo Alumni Run. And join us for the next Body Speed in mid-November when we feature coverage of the software publishing biathlon.